Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about My Hero Academia Chapter 313. The Flying Artillery Battery or whatever it was called. Wow, guys. Hey everyone. So, uh, I am doing this Monday morning. Hopefully we'll get it, the video up before Monday afternoon. But yeah, Chapter 313. You know... I think I had quite a lot of fun with the chapter. I thought it was quite lovely. Um, I think the art was really good. There was one shot of the gaunt that I just thought was beautiful. It was it, It's really inspiring. It just looked pretty good. It was like, oh, it, it's too bad this person's kind of crazy. Overall, I think it was a fun time. We got to see the third user's quirk, and that definitely does make me think a few things. Um, you know, we had uh, smoke coming out during the muscular fight. Now we're having the third user's quirk coming out during this fight. Next chapter, I feel, should be a flashback, regular style of explaining what the quirk does. And then maybe we get second user's quirk at some point. If we get second user's quirk in this fight, that's going to be really fast. But maybe whatever Stain's going to be doing, maybe we'll get second user's quirk at that point. Although, it's so hard to tell. But anyway, we're going to talk about the third user's quirk at the end and my thoughts in general. I'm just going to tell you, I think it's probably this, the simplest thing we can do right now is just assume it to be a multiplier type quirk especially with what you see uh, happen with Izuku at the end kind of feels like a multiplier but what I really want to start off with and really talk about was where do we go from here because this is the part that really just has me wondering uh, sometimes over the live streams people ask me what do I think is gonna happen next and it's like really I don't know I, I know white despair a commenter you might see him on the video or something um, says that he thinks this arc is gonna end with all for one being um, one of the the main arc villain it's like yeah, maybe, I, but I, I really don't know. And when I look at this chapter, the only thing I really believe is that we're going to have something touching on Shizaki and Stain left, right? Shizaki shows up in this thing. And then his his presence here is really the big question mark. Like, what's going to go down with Shizaki? And when we look at, in terms of plot elements, we have Hawks having an involvement with Nagant that he wants to come after Nagant. Uh, we have All Might on his way to deal with it, to go get Izuku. Uh, Shizaki is around, we haven't seen Stain. And then in this chapter, Izuku ends up with a lot of his items thrown around the area, which if Izuku was to get captured, you know, um, the items the items could be there as a narrative cue to say, like, oh, look, guys, this is a clue. Izuku was in this area, but he's gone. But although, like, they know where he would have been fighting, so it's like, is it really that important? Ultimately, with with this whole situation, the question is, is Izuku going to lose to Nagant or not? And the thing is, when you look at it, you can make it work either way. If Izuku wins against Nagant, it's because he has multiple quirks that catch her by surprise. And also because super super strength is really aggressive. If Izuku loses to Nagant, all we can say is like, okay, Nagant is actually super experienced. This is what happens when you have a kid going up against a veteran, pretty much. So either way, you can make it work. It's really ultimately the fight revolves around the conflict between surprise and experience. Is Nagant's experience going to be enough to get her the skill victory? Or is Izuku's surprise factor going to be enough to overwhelm her? Honestly, he should have been able to swat her out of the sky already. But me personally, and this is not talking from any kind of analysis standpoint, I do hope Izuku wins. I would rather Izuku wins just because that makes things easier. But at the same time... Izuku needs to... The chances are that Izuku is going to have some kind of ramification being applied to him. You can't have a situation where All Might is re being reminded of his failings with Night Eye. And you can't have a situation where Izuku is being noted to be... Um, maybe sleep deprived you can't have these factors and then his dog pursuit you can't have these factors coming in here and not have some kind of counterbalance especially in this chapter where you have um number three telling izuku like hey you haven't used this quirk before like we have seen izuku have a little bit of a uh of a backlash from using these quirks in general like one for all is built on backlash when you think about it in relation to Izuku some kind of ramification should be coming for the kid in the future we just don't really know what form it's going to be in the simplest form is to really think that Izuku is going to get caught by Nagant and then get away halfway through but even then it's it's tough because we don't know exactly what the author is planning. If he has another conflict coming after the guns, right? Like that's where Izuku could fall. Izuku could fall at any given point. Um, the only thing that is really clear 
at this point, just looking from the way the story is going, is that a fall has to happen. Uh, it's just, again, the issue is where exactly is the fall going to occur. Izuku might be going a little bit too hard. Well, I'll open it up to you. Do you guys think a fall will actually happen for Izuku? All things considered, um, you have to remember uh, a story is nothing without the fall. You need to have that roller coaster ride. Right now, Izuku is on a high because he grabbed the gun, but you know, we might swoop back down. But of course, this hero academia is idealistic. We're going to be swooping down and going back up. We'll have to see what ultimately ends up happening. Anyway, let's walk into the page by page walkthrough, starting with page one. So, page one. I think it was a great establishment page. Uh, the car's name is Hercules. Excellent. And then we have these attacks from these Attack on Titan Thunder Spear wannabes. On this page, I found it very funny that All Might can sense murderous intent. And then I thought it was even funnier because, I mean, like, I can't sense murderous intent. But if I saw people with giant spears with rockets attached to the back and they were throwing it at me, it would not occur to me to think that this could still possibly be a prank. I find the line, if this isn't a dumb prank then, I find that line to be very strange and unusual because I don't think that should even be um, considered at the point that someone threw a grenade at you and they came in front of you with spears that are rocket propelled. You guys get what I'm saying? Like. It's just not something that I would even uh, stipulate. I would not even put the. I would not even put a degree of doubt in that line. I just. I can't imagine living in a world where rocket spears will still provoke the thought that these guys might be playing a dumb prank. Also, props to All Might for being able to sense murderous intent. I mean, if I saw thunder spears being directed at me, I would think that there's murderous intent too. Anything with an explosive is murderous intent. Uh, page 2 is Rest in Peace Hercules. I think it'll be fine. Um, All Might takes his phone in this page, and also he says that Izuku's being targeted aloud. So the important thing here is really... Um, he has a line of communication here, and the other thing is that maybe the line was open, maybe someone heard that message, or e or All Might could have just been saying it out loud. Either way, well, you know, keep your mind open for that possibility that someone comes in saying like, oh yeah, we, we got your message. Uh, on this page, also note that he took his briefcase with him. What's in the briefcase? I don't know. Um, could be anything. Could be something to help Izuku, could be something to help All Might, could be important plot relevant details. The fact that the author had him taking the briefcase, I would hope that's not like a change of clothing, because that's kind of lame. I mean, like, if it's a lot just, if it's a, if it's a change of clothing, then that's going to be like, okay, author, you know what, props, props for having All Might take that with him, because that's, that's the, that's, that's, I get, no, no, I'm not sure that's sensible. In a fire drill, you're not expected to take a whole luggage of your clothing, never mind, never mind. Uh, let's hope it's plot relevant. Does anyone have any ideas about what's in the briefcase? Let me know down below. Page 3, it's All Might's Might. So first note, um, from these guys' dialogue, these guys were put up to this and didn't know who was here. Second, they're low tier enough to get immediately intimidated by a walking skeleton. It's really good to know that Nagant wasn't able to find good help. And we can assume that she got these guys because one guy says, you know what we're here for. It would be really funny if these guys are totally unrelated. So I'm really going to hope that this is Nagant paying for them. Because otherwise that means Nagant didn't think to check All Might. Anyway, on this page, it's good to know that All Might has Conqueror's Hockey. And I also like that no matter how far we get into here Academia, it's nice to know that there will always be trash tier villains like the ones that showed up at USJ. Anyway, page 4 is the full intensity All Might page and also the kind of concerning All Might page. All Might brings up the day I die line. That's kind of concerning to say that in a, in a, in a, in a spot where we might potentially end up meeting all for one. I mean, like, let's face it, if All Might dies, that's going to be a pretty big uh, wake-up call for Izuku because it's... In Hero Academia, people only really realize how wrong they are after someone is dead. Uh, case in point, All Might and Night Eye. Anyway, aside from that, it's a really cool line. And it, w it was pretty neat to see All Might having his little moment where he's like, I, I gotta do a lot for Izuku. Now, moving away from that, there are some little weird things here. There's these bzzzed lines. And that is usually the lines that are indicative of electricity. So, I'm not sure why exactly they're here. Any thoughts? Uh, my first thought is that All Might has a taser or something on him. Like, maybe something came out of his suitcase that is giving off the electricity. And I don't think it's those guys. Because those guys, they had fire stuff. I, the, that sound effect doesn't really fit. 
Now I do notice that one of the guys with the gas mask, he dropped something. But in the previous page, he was... It looked like he was holding a canister that he was filling with something. So I don't fully understand what is going on here, but I don't think whatever that guy was holding would give off the electricity sound effect. So that's interesting. I'm I'm interested to see if All Might has something with the thunder or with the electricity sound effects. Anyway, taking these first four pages in context, you know, what do they do? Because those pages are a continuous scene. Um, well, they tell us how All Might survives, so we can check off that little thing there. And they set a condition, or they set up a potential condition, that being, like, for Izuku to get hurt, or, like, seriously hurt, All Might has to be going down. It just pretty much tells us that All Might's very much willing to sacrifice himself for Izuku, which is really concerning just because of how All Might might die. Um, now, see, with the All Might thing, the bigger thing here is that Night Eye put an expiration date on All Might, he said that All Might would die in a very traumatic way. Um, enough that he was kind of, you know, scared by it. And mind you, I'm paraphrasing. And it's just, in this in this sense, I do think that there's still going to be a rhetoric about um, the future being changed. But I think what's going to be changing is just like, you know, instead of All Might dying in a, like, a super traumatic way, he's going to die being a hero. Uh, it's going to be like, it's going to be saving Izuku or something like that, right? One thing I am thinking is... You know, if All Might was to sacrifice himself for Izuku, and he does this when All for One is around, like he's he's protecting Izuku from All for One, I could see All for One saying something like, "Oh, All Might died the same way that my brother died. Like my brother got in the way of an attack that was meant for the second user, and that's how things went down. Um, and you know that might lead us into like the flashback of it, how exactly the first passing of One for All happened. You know, that's what I'm thinking. I think it's a nice little idea, but. We'll have to see whether or not it happens. At this point, though, I am very concerned for All Might. Page 5 is total badass movement. How is Nagant even keeping up with the living lightning bolt that is Izuku? Is what I'm really wondering. Page 6 is interesting. First, it's good to see that Izuku is applying judgment and thinking things through. If Izuku can be as oppressive to Nagant as he was to Gentle, uh, that would be pretty baller. I would be 100% in. He hasn't really been oppressive yet. This has been a kind of... Like, Nagant's been applying her judgment pretty well here. Anyway, on page 6, I'm pretty sure that this lightning effect is danger sensed. It's way more stylized than normal, and it's a little bit more wild, but that might be speaking to how intense the pain is and how quickly it's coming in. And note, the lightning here crosses panels. Uh, that kind of stylization usually does mean um, it's something special and not just a regular lightning bolt. And it's, in, in this case, the lightning is coming from Izuku. Um, so, the only thing that crosses panels like this is usually Danger Sense, and when I'm seeing it here, it just tells me it's a wild, uh, urgent Danger Sense. And again, in context, that makes sense, like, how else would Izuku know to check behind him for the bullet, right? He wasn't expecting a bullet coming from behind him. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because if I remember correctly, the spoiler said that Izuku's Danger Sense wasn't working, and in this chapter, what it's saying is that Danger Sense is working, but Izuku doesn't have enough time to physically react to it. And in this case, right after Izuku hits the first bullet, the second one hits him. So, you know, you can see an obvious weakness. Izuku gets the danger sense, but what can he really do if there's an attack coming from two sides, right? Page 7. Izuku gets shot from below, and honestly, the, this page looks really good. If there's one thing I like about this aerial battle, is that we get to get some really good poses for Izuku. Overall, I think it's just really cool action. Anyway, Izuku says he doesn't sense bloodlust. Now, see, when Izuku says something like this, it's like, okay, this is this is all right. Izuku actually has an extra sense in the form of danger sense. So him being able to sense bloodlust is actually pretty all right. Um, now, I will note, you know, there is one person nearby that's relevant. That is Shizaki. And in that case, good to know that Shizaki is still dormant. Um, good to know that he's not a factor. Good to know he's not like watching Izuku from a corner and being like, yo, I remember that green kid, right? Um, so that's good to know. Anyway, uh, one thing that I want to say is that I don't know if you realize, but I think Izuku has been doing really well so far in this fight with his judgment. Um, like, yeah, he's been caught off guard with a few spots here, but the things catching him off guard, they're coming from a pro hero and someone who's actually trying to uh, maim him. So when I'm looking at it, like Izuku actually has a pretty good challenge here. Like his mistakes so far are mistakes coming out specifically because of the gaunt skill. Um, otherwise, at this stage, at page 7, he hasn't done anything that I think has been um, really stupid. 
or anything really close to approaching stupid. Page 8, prettiest page in the chapter. Really love this page, really inspiring. I like how uh, whimsical uh, Nagant looks. He kind of looks like a fairy dancing across the sky, not gonna lie. This is an inspiring page, man. Anyway, page 8. Uh, I'm really concerned about Nagant when I see her using this quirk. Uh, still, I mean, recall from chapter 59, right? All Might said that the load was too much for people who were granted quirks and they became puppets, right? And mind you, in that chapter, he does say many people, which is not all people, but it's still an issue of when you have this on one side, knowing that granting people quirks turns them into puppets uh, because it overwhelms them. And then when you have on the other side, having more than one quirk from one for all causes them to burn their life out. It's really concerning for Nagant. And one of the first things I'm thinking is like, you know, all for one, knowing that people have this reaction to multiple quirks might legitimately not care. Like all for one might be thinking like, yo, you got an expiration date. I'm expecting you to go get Izuku, but as soon as you got him, you're probably going to like fritz out. So I don't really care. Like, I think it's better for all for one to not keep Nagant nearby. Yeah, I feel like Nagant's going to be this disposable when it comes to all for one. That's my gut instinct. I would love to see um, all for one keep her around. Cause I would actually like to see more of the manipulation side to all for one. But right now, there's too many things that are concerning about her, especially when you consider the fact that all for one hasn't clued her in on the whole situation with Izuku, um, which might just speak to how much he wants her to know unless he doesn't know anything about it. But yeah, moving away from that, page eight was a really nice page. I think it's really creative using the blast from her gun to propel her. Anyway, as we go forward, I'm going to be looking for any sign of strain from the gaunt. But right now, she seems to be doing pretty well. Page 9, Izuku analyzes. Interesting that as Izuku gets closer, the gaunt gets more confident and therefore she's able to shoot with more accuracy. Um, though, when I read that, all it really says to me is that the gaunt is really good in close range combat. Uh, and good to know that the issue with Danger Sense, as Izuku says, is that he won't have enough time to act in regards to the warning. And I think, again, that's a lot better than uh, Danger Sense just flat out not going off. It's better that you have Danger Sense going off at all times for any danger, and then have Izuku not be able to uh, react than to quantify what exactly is dangerous enough. Because at some points, Danger Sense just feels like it's a precognitive ability. Page 10 is a critical page. The Gat didn't know that Izuku would have multiple quirks. And here's the possible implications from that reality. One, all for one for some reason doesn't know that Izuku has multiple quirks right now. As in, for some reason, the vestige in Shigaraki didn't convey that knowledge. Even though it was able to convey enough to be able to break out simultaneously with the original. Or two, all for one does know, but he chose not to tell Nagant. And in that one, it says either he thinks Nagant didn't need to know because she's capable enough or he forgot or he didn't want to tell her for some reason, even though she was going to find out by going into the fight with him. You can take your pick. Um, I'm withholding judgment on this one. But if it turns out that All for One is just a stupid guy, well, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. All for like for All for One to lose and All for One's going to lose, he needs to be the chances of him being shown to be stupid at some critical moment. Are likely going to happen because usually with really hardcore villains you need them to be stupid for them to actually fall it happens a lot it happens a lot in narrative again in here academia it's usually overconfidence that brings people down page 11 is a funny page with n good to see the tactics talk from uh n here i love his dynamic with izuku i think it's great i, I love how he's poking the guy's head i also like seeing how much smoke izuku can produce at full blast um anyway on this page we see izuku doing some extreme squats those exercises that he did in class were they looked like they were really good for him anyway um, on this page, note there's this little sound effect coming out, this little cricking. Um, really interesting. On page 12, things get super interesting. First, we have the sound effect centered on Izuku's legs. I assume this is stuff cracking. Anyway, we get third user showing up. And at this point, I will say that this might be the, perhaps the most questionable thing that Izuku has done judgment-wise for this fight. That said, it's a tough situation. It's either this or, you know, wreck his legs with a one for all at 100%. Anyway, it was nice to see that Horikoshi brought up Parallel Process again, and also interesting to know that Izuku hasn't had time to test the last two quirks. Or at least, he hasn't, test he hasn't tested the third, which tells me he most likely hasn't tested the second. Which also brings up the question, why haven't you tested them? Anyway, it was good to see the third user being very helpful here. Uh, page 13, Izuku reminds us what he's chasing after, Shigaraki and All for One, and you know, when I see Izuku saying this, it's like, 
You know, legitimately, it might not be as easy as getting Lady Nagant to tell you. For instance, All For One may have like a really convoluted way of making contact with him and it's all to just make sure that he's protected. Um, I And also here, I like that Izuku thinks he'll get information out of a pro hero like Nagant. Like seriously, what exactly do you mean once Lady Nagant tells me what I need to know? What are you willing to do, Izuku, to make sure she tells you what you want to know? Um, personally, I hope Izuku is willing to go all the way here and go in for some torture or psychological torture. Because again, I don't see Nagant breaking unless she ends up being super mercenary and being like, "Okay, yeah, you know what? You beat me. This is a this is a lot of trouble. I don't care anymore. Here's the information." But at the same time, it's like Nagant's in jail for her beliefs. Like she's done something based on her beliefs that put her in Tartarus. I, I don't know if she would be that helpful. Um, and then, like, this is one of the pages that definitely concerns me about Izuku. It's specifically just how dogged he is with Shigaraki and All for One. The concerning thing with this kind of rhetoric is that this is rhetoric that builds into, a, into tunnel vision. With Izuku the way he is right now, if a character was to come later in the, in the subsequent chapters, and say something like Izuku, you've you've had too much tunnel vision. It would it would make sense consistently. Like working your way back from that moment to this one makes sense. Like on paper, Horikoshi has set up that potential uh, payoff, and so that's what gets me really concerned. It's just this is this builds into tunnel vision. If Horikoshi wants to go in that direction. Anyway, on this page, Izuku apologizes to Gran Torino for using his cape the way he did. But if, from my perspective, is like you know capes are not there to look pretty. Capes are worn partly because they're useful and they're tactical. If you're not using your cape to mislead your opponent, I don't know what the point of the cape is. So, you know, like, you understand what's going on. Like, he doesn't want to... Like, he's attached to the cape. He has an emotional significance invested in the cape. But at the same time, this is kind of what... This is the best use for that cape. Gran Torino would be happy to know that Izuku got past a... Uh, uh, an assassin because of that cape. But again, it just speaks to how much Izuku cares about Gran Torino. Anyway, here we get Fa Jin, the third Fa Jin. Um, so at this point, I have to go over to uh, other translation sources. If you saw the spoiler video, I also dug into seeing where we could get that phrase out of. Um, so just a translation note from the uh, fan translation. The third quirk is an explosive release of internal power, similar to a move in Chinese martial arts. Um, so all I want to say here is that we don't know if Fat Jin is actually the um, the name of the quirk. Makes sense if it would be, but you might have an actual proper name for the quirk later on. Um, and Fat Jin is just a mechanism by which it's expressed or something like that. It might be like the name of the effect and then the quirk might have another name altogether. But whatever. Um, I will talk more about the quirk at the end, but I do want to note that this is a new aura that comes out here. The author does put extra attention on that aura. So it was cool to see the aura and I'm very excited to talk about the quirk itself. Page 14, we finally find out the thing about the scope. But um, I do wonder if this was useful. Also notice the angle here. Um, you know, it's funny. It's good that we didn't have any kind of, um, any kind of jokes about this girl's skirt while she's flying around. But I do remember people pointing out the angle for that shot. Anyway, uh, page 15. We have great use of Black Whip being used to create the distractions and good on the Gaunt for finding that cape in such a big area. On this page, the three boof effects tell us where the other distractions came from. Page 16 features more great displays of skill. Although I'm really surprised that Nagant didn't need the scope for her rapid fire because note the scope isn't out in the drawings. Yeah, I don't think she needs a scope. Anyway, page 16 has Izuku bursting through the building underneath Nagant at really high speeds. Uh, and then page 17 has the grab. And honestly, I really wonder how Izuku broke through those uh, all that cement. I really hope he went arm first and not head first because that's a concussion. Uh, but yeah, page 17, uh, Nagant gets grabbed. It's a great panel. I think it looks great. And let's see. All right. At this point, I have a note. I really, really hope that Izuku breaks her arm. And you know, that might sound kind of crazy, but I really hope that at least the people who believe Izuku's a vigilante is on my side on this one, but Nagant's got a gun. If there's ever been a person to apply vigilante justice to, it's Nagant. Break her arm, break her fingers. If you break her arm, she can't use her gun, ideally. The gun might have a trigger on it. 
Um, because of that, and at the very least, you won't be able to load her hair into the gun. Look, the the villains would break arms. I think this woman was ready to blow off Izuku's arms, and not for a lack of trying. She tried to break off. Uh, she tried to blow off Izuku's arms. Uh, given this situation, you know, I think it would be completely reasonable to break the woman's arm. If Izuku does it in the next chapter, you know, I'm not going to complain. I think it's a good move. Neutralize the opponent. You don't want them using their weapons. There's nothing wrong with that. You're maintaining their life. I Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. The longer that Nagant has her arm out, the more dangerous things become. And now that we're at this page, you know, we had a question. Is Nagant actually going to be okay against Izuku? Because Nagant might have a blind spot if Izuku gets too close to her. She's good at mid-range. She's, uh, she's good at long range. But in this case, there's just geometry to worry about. Nagant, from the position that Izuku is in, cannot move her rifle into Izuku's face. Like, that's just not how that's going to work. Unless you can change the, uh, the size of the barrel, I don't think it's going to be reasonable. She has things strapped to her body, so now the next question is going to be, what's on her body? Is Does she have any method for surviving uh, close range? At that point, you also have to say, well, I really hope that Izuku breaks her arm, because now the question is, how is she going to get out of Izuku's grip? Because Izuku's grip really should have the power of nine people behind it. Or at least half the power of nine people of nine people behind it. So I am very concerned for Izuku. I really hope we get to see something cool here. Um, what is Izuku's next move here? Um, hopefully he doesn't let go of her and tosses her into the ground because in Hero Academia, people can take a lot of punishment. Do not toss her into a building, please, because if you release her here, it's going to be a problem. Really, the move here is to break her hand because then she can't use her uh, at least. From our current perspective, the chances of her being able to use her weapon after that significantly lessen. Man, this is anxiety. This is just pure anxiety here. What's going to happen? At that point, if Nagant has some other contingency, that's also going to suck. And you know, honestly, if, if Nagant loses here and she gets away with a broken arm, that would actually be a pretty nice way to end the fight, personally. Anyway, let's talk about that quirk. The Fa Jin. I think at this point, from what I've seen, this quirk is martial arts based it's your explosive inner energy being released out um and from what i saw doing the research in the martial arts it's pretty much like bruce lee's one inch punch the the main mechanism that i can really understand is that it is an explosive release of energy it's an explosive release of energy and there is the appearance of you know for relatively little action you get a big return um, to just quote one thing that a commenter had said, just to because because they were much better at summarizing my thoughts here, the quirk might be able to manifest the internal energy within his body without the physical effort of exerting such energy. So Izuku can do stronger moves without hurting his body. Honestly, that's like the, one of the best explanations that we have for it. Um, from what we've seen here thus far, it looks like it's centered on his legs. The third user has turbines or like oh sorry not turbines sorry. Uh, you know, the little pipes on his shoulder. Um, the aura that we see here is still centered on his legs. Uh, Izuku uses it to go through a building, even though you could say that he could do that with one for all. But if it's an explosive release of energy, then it's like, well, it kind of becomes like a rocket kind of thing. If you've ever seen anime where they have like a guy um, poking a rock and then all of a sudden the rock just splits and gets destroyed. I think it's the same mechanism. It's a lot of it's a lot of force for relatively little action. That's why ultimately I think for now, until we have more information, I think it's reasonable to say this is a multiplier. It ultimately acts like a multiplier. And I know that's really weird to think that Izuku has a multiplier on top of super strength. But from what we've seen here in the context, this is probably the most reasonable thing. Note here, when Izuku also grabs onto her arm, um, Izuku's body goes upward, which just tells us that um, Izuku still doesn't have full control here and that there's a lot of power he came out with. All uh, ultimately, though, I'm very curious how exactly Izuku broke through that building because I, I want to know if he used his head because uh, that's just a little bit unreasonable. Um, any other things to note? Um, well, on page 17, it's just cool to note that we do have legitimately a new energy effect because if you look at the lines for the Fa Jin effect and you compare it to the lines for the lightning right next to it, you can tell that they're very different. I do kind of wonder about um, how physical the new energy is. I, I wonder, is it as physical as smoke? If you touch it, is it like a ribbon? Or is it just pure, like, uh, is it pure plasma-like energy? I, I am actually legitimately curious. Anyway, 
at this stage, we could say that Izuku has now become a Dragon Ball Z character. Because at this stage, um, once you go into the martial arts area, you're pretty much entering Dragon Ball Z territory. Anyway, for next chapter, I am... I'm hoping... I'm hoping to see some some intelligent action here. I'm hoping that sleep deprived Izuku will be like, I'm breaking your arm. Sorry, it's happening. I don't see any problem with this. I mean, Izuku had no problem batting Shizaki out of the sky with 100% um, and hitting the ground hard. So here's hoping. Anyway, jokes aside, um, that's it for me. I don't really have anything else I, uh, I want to share here. Um, thank you all for watching, and until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.